very excited to continue the conversation about customers and markets by um, introducing our guest speakers. So um, Julieta Moradai was with New Story and also with Home Team, and I think she's going to explain both of those um, coming forward. We met actually at the Industrialized Construction Forum just over a year ago, hard to believe because we've had several engagements since then. And uh, she spoke last year and now, um, you know, wanted to invite her back to give us this perspective. So uh, with that, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks, Daniel. Very excited to be here. And I can't believe that was a year ago. It feels like five. I think pandemic year is equal as you could multiply by five. Um, but great to meet everyone. I'll do a quick intro first. So my background's in architecture and structural engineering. I did my undergrad at Northeastern in Boston and structural. And then I went to UC Berkeley for my master's in both architecture and structural, which is how I met Daniel at Stanford. Um, I worked for several years at AIRUP in the San Francisco office. And previous to that, I did the co-op program where you essentially do eight months of internships and I did that five times. Um, and I, I was kind of all over the place. I worked as an Imagineer at Disney. I worked at SGH, I worked at AIRUP. Um, so I've had quite a bit of exposure in terms of the design world, consulting, construction, but I was always very interested in the research side. So how to merge um, really research in the industry with academia and then combining architecture and engineering together. I really like how that's done more in Europe and I want to bring that more to the US. So when I was at AIRUP uh, for a few years, I was volunteering and I was on the board of New Story Charity, which I'm gonna cover during this presentation. And I was really excited about the idea of bringing research and development to the construction industry because it's an industry that's very archaic in its nature because of the culture uh, we've always done it this way mindset. And so I was really intrigued and in kind of tapping into that and understanding more why, especially in the US. And um, I ended up joining New Story full time to launch a research and development team. And since then, um, in the middle of the pandemic, we actually launched a venture capital fund called Home Team Ventures to invest in early stage startups that are construction tech. So very similar to the, the kinds of partners that I had in the R&D program at New Story, but now we're looking at how can we actually invest at the early stage into these startups because one of the biggest pain points we were feeling with our partners was that unless they have the seed funding, especially when construction tech is so capital intensive, it's very hard for these teams to, to hit the ground running and really scale up to meet with other investors or other customers. And so we kind of started this branch of a capital arm from, from the nonprofit, um, but I'll be sharing that way more in, in the presentation. So I'm just going to share my screen quick. Can everybody see that? Good. So I know you all saw the YouTube video. It's not what I want to do. I know you guys all saw the YouTube video of um, the 3D printer, so you're all familiar with New Story. What you might not know is the new venture fund that we launched. So this presentation, I'll be covering both New Story, the nonprofit, and Home Team Ventures. And I know that during your previous lecture with Daniel, you talked about looking at the market from outside in and inside out and really thinking about how some folks, if you're going outside in, you're looking re really at what do the customers need before developing a solution. And that's what we really did at New Story Charity. Because at New Story, we're constantly innovating um, within the built environment for housing, but first always tapping into the families that are gonna be living in these homes versus at Home Team Ventures, we're looking out in the market and trying to find people have a very unique solution. Um, and now we're trying to engage them with the customers, the end users to think of what kind of market can they tap into. So I'll start off with new story first and then transition into really what we're doing at Home Team Ventures. So of course, um, I'm sure you've all seen the YouTube video that Daniel shared, but this was where it all started, really where um, new story started going way more into the, the space of technology and especially industrialized construction specifically with ICON. So new story helped ICON by being their very first investor, which is a fun fact. It's, it's very difficult for a nonprofit to invest in a, in a startup, but um, we were able to do that because ICON, they were thinking of doing 3D printing. So back in 2017, we met the founders of ICON. They had a janky printer in their backyard. They had an idea to be able to print homes every 12 hours. They were really looking at the speed side of construction. And from the new story perspective, focusing on homelessness, we knew that speed is very critical in building. And so we decided to partner with the founders to really engage these entrepreneurs in the space of housing. We knew that if we were an early stage partner with them, we could bring this technology to the homelessness space and use it to be building homes quicker. 
And so for us, what that meant is if we have skin in the game, if we invest in their first printer, invest in their R&D strategy and their material science early on, we could really adapt the technology for housing. Because you could use 3D printing for any kind of built project, but if we were to use it for housing and again, adapt the technology early on to be used in rural Mexico with not potable water, with no electricity, really designing for what the families need, then we know that ICON is gonna be in the business of housing for the future to come. So that's really where the, where the mindset stemmed from. Um, at New Story, thinking of outside in, really thinking of the families, they're gonna be living in these homes. We need to design this technology such that it's gonna be useful for these families and what their needs are. So to give you context of just generally what drives us at New Story and at Home Team and why we are trying to engage these founders and these technologies in the, in the space of housing is this is our North Star number. So we know that today there's 1.6 billion people in the world without access to housing. And this number is just increasing in scale tremendously. So in the next nine years, the UN is projecting this number is gonna double globally. So that, that idea of speed is very critical to us and why we're trying to bring in technology because we know that with technologies like industrialized construction, that's how we could start really gaining efficiencies and time for building. And for context on just new story as a whole, it's a housing nonprofit that started through Y Combinator. So I'm sure you're all familiar with YC. It's one of the biggest incubators in Silicon Valley. And that really made new stories stand out from other nonprofits in this space. The reason it's even called new story is that we wanted to create a new story for what people think of nonprofits. People typically think of nonprofits as, you know, these groups that are just kind of helping on the sidelines. They're not really moving the needle in any kind of space, but we wanted to come into it and saying, we want to be a nonprofit that thinks like a tech firm. We want to use the product development stages, using customer discovery first, engaging with the end users that are homeless, understanding their needs, and then creating solutions to really address the biggest barriers in affordable housing. So the way that we did that at New Story was since New Story launched in 2015 and went through the YC program, the first step was customer discovery again. So what that looked like is partnering with federal governments all over Central and South America and building housing communities with them. So again, what that means is federal governments have a certain amount of allocated funding every single year to build communities. And especially in developing countries, this is working with folks that lives in slums. And so we partner with federal governments and then build communities of usually 200 to 500 homes. And the main differentiator is that not only are we coming up with really creative ways of financing these homes, but we are also partnering with an early stage R&D partner and every community is built differently. So every community is almost like a lab case study or sandbox for these startups. Meaning like with ICON, when you are you know, creating the very first 3D printed home in history, you need to prove that it works. And how do you prove that it works? You first do a prototype, your MVP. That's the other picture that I showed you previously. We did that in the US. But then you have to show scalability. The first question developers are gonna ask you is, is it permitted? Which it was, it was we use US building codes in Austin, Texas for that first home. But then can you scale this? Is it truly gonna, can we actually build a full community with this? And so by having these communities that we build in developing countries, we have lower barriers of entry. We're able to build much quicker. We have buy-in from federal government. So everything is just easier in terms of time and cost. So we know we brought the printer to Mexico, for example, and then we're able to scale over multiple homes and prove the impact. Proving impact means we're looking at how much does this cost compared to traditional methods? What is the speed like? And in the world of industrialized construction, that's really important to prove these impact metrics so that then ICON could say, okay, developers in the US, we could come back and, and scale as well here. So over the past six years at New Story, uh, we've built over 25 housing communities. And again, every community is built with a new technology or with a different kind of R&D partner. So this is an example of one of the communities that we're building currently in Mexico. Um, there's 500 families that will live in this community called Innovation Village. The reason we gave it this name is that we have multiple R&D partners in one community. So again, this idea of having kind of a sandbox for innovation, ICON has 20 homes out of this whole community, but other um, plots of land have different kinds of innovations, whether it's a software, a hardware like 3D printing, we even have material science. So we're looking into cool roofing materials um, and design processes. So if you're more interested in, in the other kinds of R&D partners we have um, on our website at newstorycharity.org, we have a list of all the different types of partners and innovations that we're seeking. Our strategy behind doing this in every community is that 
Again, we're looking outside in. So on the news story front, we are first addressing the barriers. The number one reason we wanted to build communities ourselves. We wanted to become home builders because by actually building, we understand the main pain points. We know that if we are facing these pain points, so is every other NGO and housing organization. So we first build, even if we're adopting a new technology, we are using it and understanding the challenges. By understanding the biggest barriers, we then know what kinds of innovations should we bring in. So we, we work with the families, we work with the local partners, with governments, understand their barriers for every community, and then say, what is the single best solution to address some of these barriers? And we're also measuring cost, speed, and quality. We are capturing these metrics, and that's what makes it easy to, once we really you know, are able to adopt a technology and bring it into a community, we could then share it with other organizations or governments by showcasing these metrics. So this was really the strategy on the new story front was to partner with a lot of other R&D partners that are creating these solutions and then create a housing innovation toolkit. What that looks like is almost a menu of different ideas for innovations. So every time we build a new community and have to partner with the federal government, we first ask what their needs are. So for example, in the US, if you're in California, one of the biggest issues is the cost of land for housing. That's one of the biggest barriers to housing. So based on that, we then say, this is a menu of solutions what should we actually adopt or use in this project to address these big barriers of cost, speed, and quality. But that always is super dependent on location, the government you're working with, and the local partners. So I'll go over a few of the innovations that we've adopted on the new story front. Um, the very first one being lean participatory design. So this is not what you would consider a typical innovation. It's really a design process. And the way that we're able to do, you know, outside looking in by engaging the end user first and doing true customer discovery. So what this looks like is we do a series of workshops, um, very similar to what IDEO created in terms of how you interview your end customer. We've just adapted it to the use case of architecture. So we engage the families once the government picks the families that are going to be living in a community. We engage them in a series of workshops. Uh, it's typically about five for every community where they actually are able to design the home, their home and the community layout together. So it's this idea that, you know, we're all architects, the, the families, the end user that will be living in these homes, they're the ones that are truly creating the design and providing feedback. So what we do is we split up the community between gender and age. The reason being is usually um, in the communities that we've worked with, when we do split them up, we see that we get way more engagement when people are split up between those two groups. Um, and again, they're, they are creating their community layout, which is very important too, in terms of where to build which kind of housing. And this is really important and critical, I would say, when you bring in a new innovation like 3D printing, because these families need to trust, you know, that this printer coming in, they have no idea what it is. They've never seen this before. They need to really trust the material. They need to trust the building of it um, before you come bring it in. So we've seen that when you bring in a, a very new kind of technology or way of building, when you engage the families, local partners, local builders and government early on, that's where you get more engagement and that's where it gets easier to actually you know, adopt technology. One of the biggest issues in construction is the actual adoption of tech. And so this is how we get more buy-in early on. Another tool that we use is our data impact measuring tool, which is called Felix. And this is our way of one, capturing how many families live in a community, what their needs are, what their issues are. But when we bring in a new technology, we are keeping up with these families months and years later to see has their quality of life improved. So we, let, we track things like sleep, employment, safety. So this is our way of getting massive adoption after because for 3D printing, we're not just looking at, you know, now we're printing homes in 12 hours. We're also looking at how do families feel in these homes? Do they feel safer? Now that there's an earthquake, do they feel like the, the walls are sturdy? We, we get feedback from them. And then we get more adoption for future NGOs or nonprofits or governments to, to adopt as well. So that's what the Felix tool looks like. It works on a cell phone. It works through WhatsApp as well. So we're really, again, engaging with the end users as to how to build this platform before even building it. So outside looking in always. And then the third is one that you're probably all most familiar with, which is the 3D printer. So this was a really interesting project, again, because we were their very first investor. Very few people know that about Icon. So we met with the founders in 2017. And since then, we permitted the very first 3D printed home in history in Austin, Texas. We then brought the printer to Mexico. These are the very first two homes we ever built in Mexico with Icon. 
and we built the first community in history. Um, what I love about this example is that the very first time a 3D printer was ever used in history was for the homeless. So this idea of using technology first for impact, for social change, is a new kind of philosophy that I'm very excited to be engaging more with. And I'm seeing more and more founders in the space of construction looking at it this way. Um, if you're more interested in the story behind how we did this, what the technology looks like, a lot of the barriers that we faced, there is an Apple TV documentary, which I'd be happy to link in after. Um, it's called Mexico, and it's in a docuseries called Home. And it really goes through the journey of how Icon and News Story partnered at the earliest stage to 3D print the first community and what it was like engaging with the families first and really thinking through their big barriers and working in rural Mexico for this technology. What's really interesting about our case study with Icon is that it's something that is very rare in nature. So one, again, we were their first investor. So it's very rare for an early stage startup to have that as their first check. Two, we partner with them early on to adapt the technology for the use case of housing. And so we were able to come into every single design meeting, every single you know, brainstorming session to think through what kind of material do we need? How is local labor gonna build this? How are we gonna use this printer in the rural conditions of Mexico? And so being able to do this with them at the early stage, again, bringing in the families using lean participatory design is what allowed us to do this so quickly because we were already engaging with the end users early on so we were already adapting the technology and the design for their use case. There wasn't barriers during construction. A lot of times, because you have so many stakeholders in a design project during the construction phase is when you're trying to make changes. And that didn't happen to us because we were looking at it from the early, early days. And two, Icon was able to massively scale because we were working in rural Mexico. So what that looks like is, you know, one of the biggest barriers was permitting the first home using US building codes. But then if you were to scale in the US, getting actual permitting and going through the, the hurdles of zoning in the US, getting government buy-in at a municipal, state, and federal level takes a long time. But because we took the printer and went to Mexico, we were able to do this all within one year. Within one year, we built this community. We had Apple TV do a documentary, and then Icon blew up. Blew up in the sense that they were able to now build in the US. I mean, today there's homes on Zillow that are 3D printed by Icon in the US. They have partnerships with Fannie Mae and with HUD for housing, for affordable housing, and with NASA to build on the moon. So ICON truly scaled on one side, on the impact side, which is what we cared about. Can we use this technology first for impact? But on the other side, they also scaled their business very quickly, and they're now considered the number one leader in 3D printing when it comes to residential housing. So when we look at this case study and we see that it's a truly double bottom line approach, because again, we're able to drive affordable housing and innovation, merge the two and make housing seem attractive to Silicon Valley. But on another end, we're also able to scale this business very quickly. I mean, Icon within just three years, now they're valued at over 150 million when they close their series A. This truly led us to think through how can we partner with our R&D partners with a new story to truly drive scale. And that's what really led to the ideas of home team ventures. So we kept at New Story after about five years of New Story beginning, we kept thinking through the R&D program and how we're driving innovation in the world of impact, but that the idea that there's 1.6 billion people, again, who don't have housing, and this number is increasing to 3 billion by 2030, kept making us think through how do we really scale things like industrialized construction? How are we able to work with the market, work with the capital side, for-profit sector, to truly drive business in the space of housing? making housing, affordable housing seem attractive to these people. When usually in real estate, when you talk about affordable housing, people, I mean, there's very few people who are even doing this because it, there's no incentive. You don't even break even on projects a lot of times, especially in the US. And it's not an attractive space to be in because you're not making any kinds of margins. So that's what really led us to think through what's the highest leverage solution that we could replicate this case study with ICON, but with other partners. This is also coupled with the idea that the construction industry is lacking innovation incredibly. So right now, I mean, McKinsey did this awesome report, I really urge everyone to read it, where they looked at every single industry vertical 
And at the very bottom for least digitized is construction right above farming. The reason being that the AEC industry invests very little into R&D. Most industries that you're seeing here on this graph in that first column, they invest typically six to 7% of their value into R&D, into innovation. Construction invests about 0.5% into innovation. So there's great companies out there. For example, if you look at Suffolk Construction, they're based out of the Northeast in the US, they actually invest a lot into innovation and it, it showcases in their projects, but that's a very rare, they're, they're one of the rare ones. So it's, it's really a coupling of one, it's the culture, but two, it's the fact that the construction industry is tied to liability. So they're, they're very risk adverse. But this has a trickle effect into housing because we're not gaining efficiencies in cost or in time. And so more and more, it is difficult to build housing where you can make margins. So you have no incentive to build, there's a lack of supply, but there is a growing, growing number of demand. So we really started thinking through, we wanna replicate this idea of icon and scaling them in the market and bringing in the, the capital space and for-profit space um, and engaging entrepreneurs to be in the space of affordable housing. So that's how we started Home Team Ventures. It was really when the pandemic hit and new story, we, for a few months, we actually couldn't build anymore. One, we couldn't be bringing our local partners on site anymore because of the pandemic. And we had all these amazing R&D partners that are early stage startups like Icon, um, academic partners, industry leaders that have research arms. But without being able to build, without being able to have, you know, like Innovation Village where we could bring the partners into our sandbox and, and iterate quickly and prototype and build, that's when we started thinking through what's the highest leverage solution that we could have to help our partners without actually building right now. And we realized it was through investing in them like we did with Icon. You know, with Icon, because we invested in their printer, we had a seat at the table and we were able to drive a lot of the design decisions and then also customer decisions saying, who should this be used for? Should it be used for impact first? And so we launched Home Team Ventures as a traditional VC that's focused specifically on construction tech, early stage companies that have an ability to reduce cost of construction. So what that looks like is over the whole portfolio, we're gonna be investing in about 25 early stage companies. And our number one goal is can we reduce the cost of the design build process? So there's companies that are gonna be focusing on the very early stages of you know, surveying, design, permitting, building, or after the life of the building. And we wanna really tap into every single one of those buckets so that we can reduce the, the cost of housing by half. We think by driving in innovations like industrialized construction, but also a lot of software tools, we could really start digitizing the sector for housing specifically. And again, the reason being that the cost of housing is the number one barrier where over the past you know, six years at News Story, we've seen time and time again with governments. So a lot of governments, especially at the federal level will tell us if housing costs less than $10,000 per unit, all inclusive, we could build X amount of housing. In Southeast Asia, where we've worked a few times, you know, for them, it's $4,000 per unit. We truly believe that construction technology is a prerequisite to achieving these numbers. We need to find ways of digitizing and streamlining a lot of the processes that are very archaic. And even looking at South America, this is actually a big research project that we went before we decided to launch Home Team Ventures. We wanted to see how many more people in Central and South America would have access to housing if the cost of housing was less than $10,000. We engaged and interviewed a lot of people in government and in housing to actually look at these numbers um, in more detail. And you can see here that about 35% more people would have access to housing just if we were able to reduce the cost because there'd be more incentive to actually build. So what Home Team is gonna be investing in is again, early stage startups that are double bottom line. So looking at one, you know, growing their business, it is a venture capital firm, so we need returns. We really wanna scale in the market. And we believe we could do that, especially in, given the nature of how much housing demand there is. Um, and specifically looking at reducing the cost, increasing speed and increasing quality. And if you look at it along the construction value chain, which is what I was mentioning before, here you can see some of our portfolio companies. So we've already invested in four companies. They're all gonna be along different parts of the value chain. So once we have all 25 portfolio companies, we're thinking we'll have about five in every single one of these buckets and tracking exactly how are they reducing the cost and increasing speed in every single one of these buckets. 
So again, if you're looking at conception, every single project in construction, conception is you have to survey the land, you need to actually acquire the land, and you need to start doing permits. So we're going to look a lot at the pre-construction um, side of construction. So we are looking probably at more SaaS companies, so software. Once we get into the construction execution, that's going to be likely more hardware, so like 3D printing. And we'll also look at material science. But it'll be likely about 80% of our portfolio companies will be software products. So this is, again, examples of uh, four of the portfolio companies. One of them is Airworks, which is the first one you saw in that graph. So Airworks um, branched off of MIT Design X. We do partner with a lot of universities and their accelerator programs. We've seen a lot of interesting research partners um, in academia that have spun off into startups. So we love working with them early on. So Airworks is an AI software. And what they do is aerial mapping using drone footage. So they send out drones with LIDAR scanning and convert that into aerial mapping for topographic maps in CAD. So the reason being um, that we were really interested in Airworks is that every single construction project, the very first thing you do is you need to have surveyors go out and obviously survey the land and then create these maps. Specifically in housing, this could also be adopted. So what I love about this graph here of what surveying looks like today is that it's, you know, it really showcases how archaic our industry is. So, you know, surveying has looked probably the same for the past hundred years plus. The only difference between the first two pictures is that one has color. So you could really see that we do need to be bringing in technology into our space. And so what they're trying to do is eliminate the whole process of surveyors having to go out and actually map out points and the actual creation of the mapping. So this is an example of, you know, they, they throw, take out a drone. It takes, you know, a few hours to capture all the um, laser point scanning data. And then automatically um, in the cloud server, they are converting this data in live time to topographic mapping. So what you're seeing here is, and if any of you have worked in engineering before and have done this, you know, I have in San Francisco worked on high rise buildings where I would have to screenshot Google Maps and then draw this line work myself. What this does is you're reducing all of that time for surveying and then the very early stages of the design process where you have to create these maps. Um, but what you're seeing here in this image is that the line work has different colors. So they have a machine learning and computer vision software where they're essentially um, looking at the component data. What that means is that with the LIDAR scanning, it's automatically recognizing the component information. Is it water? Is it vegetation? Is it a building, utility, it's a bridge? Why that's important is because of course, when you're creating a project, let's say a community for housing, we need to know the elevations. We need to know if we need to remove vegetation, how many homes are there. And on the news story front, because um, home team is led by myself and Alexandra that was COO of news story for the past six years, we always wear the hat of the customer. The customer being for all of these portfolio companies, the customer is gonna be likely real estate developers, GCs, architects, engineers. And we were home builders. So having operator backgrounds, we understand the main barriers first, again, outside looking in. So when we look at these portfolio companies that have a very specific solution that's more inside looking out, um, we're able to address it by thinking of the customer. So we know that at News Story, we've had numerous examples of working in communities in rural areas in developing countries where surveys take months of time to do. So for example, this is a project that I worked on in Haiti. Um, this was a few months before the pandemic had actually, and we had to travel to Haiti several times just to get the right survey data because you know it takes months for us to get this kind of map that says not to scale. I have no information about the elevations, about how many people live there currently. Are there even homes there right now that we have to tear up? So, it, I mean, it, it's constantly a battle for any affordable housing project. This is one of the biggest issues. Also, because in developing countries, there's a lot of informal settlements and people don't have access to land titles. If you don't have access to land title, you don't have access to a house, especially over generations. And so it's one of the biggest pain points that we feel in housing. And we know it could be adopted to any housing project. So when we invested into Airworks, one of the very first things that we did is we connected Airworks to the federal government in Panama. So the authority of the Panama Canal and Airworks are now doing a pilot project to test out the technology with informal settlements. So in Panama, there's a very big issue with, with informal settlements and lack of land titles. So they're gonna start off with a proof of concept project where they're gonna be mapping out 700 families. It's about 115 hectares of land. 
And they're going to be looking at what are the differences in time and cost compared to traditional methods. So the Panamanian government has a team of eight people that typically are in charge of land titles. So they're the ones that are directing all the surveyors, they're gathering the data, creating the, the CAD drawings, and then providing land titles. So they were anticipating that for this specific land, for 700 families, it would take roughly two to three years to do. With Airworks, we're looking at about one to two months to do the whole process. And it's also gonna cost less. So if this works well, then the Panamanian government wants to map out two to three provinces. So again, this is a perfect example of how we could come in, operator backgrounds that understands the end user, the, you know, the construction side as well as the family side, and we're able to look at these portfolio companies and see, can this technology that could be used for any construction project, can it be used for housing to reduce the cost of housing overall? And can we help these portfolio companies at the early stage engage with customers like governments in developing countries to use the technology for good, for impact? What's really exciting about this opportunity is that if you know, the proof of concept goes well and they're able to scale, it's gonna be their largest customer yet. So just like ICON, you have this double bottom line approach with on one end, we're using a technology for impact. Airworks typically works with developers in the US, not related to housing. And now we're gonna be using it for land titles for families that don't have access to homes. But on another side, it's also gonna be their largest revenue, largest customer. So we really wanna drive um, more capital in the space of affordable housing and showcase that you could have in an emerging market, a lot more scalability. So I know I threw out a ton of information, happy to answer any questions. And I put my email here if any of you are interested in learning more. Um, if you would like to be engaged with Home Team, I know that Alex here was one of our research fellows. So you could ask him a ton of questions about it. Um, but we are opening up another cohort of research fellows. So we have a research fellowship for New Story, as well as another one for Home Team Ventures. On the Home Team side, our research fellows do help us with scouting a lot of these companies, vetting them. Um, and also our strategy making for home team ventures, because I mean, we just launched in August of 2020. So we are working very closely with some of our research fellows to think through strategy, trends in AEC, the future of industrialized construction, the future of construction technology as a whole. So there's a lot of exciting opportunities on that front too. Um, and on new story side, we are hiring like crazy. We're going to be hiring about 15 people in the next year. So definitely check out the website there as well. Um, if you are interested in new story. Thank you.